Coming up today on Locked On at Texas Tech, Joey McGuire's got a specific challenge for his offense to open up Big 12 play. And we also hear from defensive coordinator Tim DeRuder on Young Guns making a hand for the Red Raider D. Next on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Raider! Great to see you again on Locked On at Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network. And thanks for making us your first listen on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. Today's episode brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on college. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you that. He's the only Chris Level. I'm Casey Cowan. Chris, great to be back with you, my man. Hitting hump day, the downhill slope as we are looking ahead to Morgantown, West Virginia, where the Mountaineers fit the description of the next potential victim. And we got a lot of things to dive into here today. As we open up conference play for Texas Tech, we'll get into the lay of the land within the league. Where are the Red Raiders? What group do they belong to? Pretenders, contenders, somewhere in the middle. We'll get to that up ahead. Also want to hear from Texas Tech defensive coordinator Tim DeRuiter on some of the young guys that have been flashing so far and likely have played themselves into more playing time as we get to league action. We'll get to Coach DeRuiter and those names that he mentions. But, Chris, let's kick it off with Joey McGuire on the offensive side of the football because I was really intrigued after a few weeks of being under fire as far as the offensive performance is concerned. Did some good things, obviously, against Oregon. Have done some bad things in other weeks, including that one as well. But in other weeks also, it definitely has been – a uh, peak and valley kind of year so far for that side of the football. And I wanted to give you a listen to specifically what Joey McGuire is challenging his offense to do here this week and how they're going about it. Here's head coach Joey McGuire. Really challenging the offense this week and the offensive staff to be better in the second quarter. You know, if you look at us right now, we scored 45 points in the first quarter. That's been a very productive quarter. The third quarter has been very productive. One of our worst quarters you know, on offense or our worst quarter on offense is the second quarter. You know, it's happened uh, in all three games. Uh, you know, when you look at Wyoming and even the last game, um, we could have stretched the game out and stretched the lead, and we didn't. So we've got to be better in the second quarter. And then, you know, defensively, we've got to continue to grow. Even though um, we only gave up three points in the fourth quarter, we've given up 26 points in the fourth quarter. And so, those two quarters have got to be a big emphasis. We're going to change some uh, practice periods up this week. We're going to move them around to kind of create some havoc and some sudden change. And, you know, um, hopefully that helps us in, the, in those quarters, helps us finish the first half and helps us finish the, the you know, the game. I, I think it's really weird uh, or it's – weird is not the right word. It's really difficult to, like – I think bottom line is you just want to be better, uh, uh, you know, overall. And and so when, when you when you drop a couple of games, you started to dig into specifics on on specifically where. Because sometimes, man, it's just the way, you, you know, the possessions go, uh, where the turnovers fall, where the you know whatever that. It, but it just so happens that you've kind of gone into the locker room. I don't know, a bit flat, a bit. And so, does that mean you are more? aggressive in the second quarter on purpose intentional does that mean you would you know try to jump start it a bit better but it, you, you know and, and do some things outside the box a little bit to kind of f- force the issue or or does it just mean be better you know and you know I, I think we, we all have asked for fast starts you know and, and things like that I think that's what you you definitely don't want to you know, get down early in a game and kind of be sluggish out of the gate and all that and kind of run out of time before you really get going and, and, and make it meaningful. But, yeah, the, the second quarter specifically thing, that's difficult, man, to pinpoint um, on, on on just specifically trying to be better because you're just trying to be better in general. Yeah, You know, you're not calling different plays. I think what you're telling your kids is like, we've got to sustain our focus. You come out white hot, but it can't wear off. You know, we, we've got to get to the locker room – you know, because Joey talks about that all the time. It's one of those those uh, uh, points on the key to win or plan to win, I should say, the win the middle eight. You know, the last four minutes of the first half, yep. first four minutes of the second half, 
you know, and if, you know, you, you can squeeze a lot out of that uh, to really swing the game and change it. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I guess I hadn't thought about, I mean, we obviously know about the 17, nothing lead in Wyoming and then you, you kind of give that up, but hell, hell that was in the second and the third quarter there where it was just, but it, but it, it just comes down to being better executing and, taking care of the ball and all the thing, all the big picture things we're talking about. It's hard to really extrapolate, you know, a whole lot that you, you think, okay, is going to be sustained good or bad for this team after this non-conference schedule, at least in my opinion, Chris, because you got such dramatically different weeks in the only two weeks you could really take anything from. I, I don't know what there was to learn against an FCS opponent. If it was close or, you know, things go horribly, well, you're probably learning some things you don't want to learn, but uh, in a 41 to three route, I, I don't know, but, you just look at those other two games, or I kind of do, in an isolated way, and the difference between the two is is almost night and day. I mean, in in one case, you're uh, a whisper away from taking down a top fifteen team, and we know what the other case was like. So, I I really don't know. You know, when he we talk about like, well, it's been this way all three weeks or something like that. Mm-hmm. Clearly, some of those things maybe uh, we've learned what they are or what they aren't by this point in time. But I almost feel like. Uh, I didn't learn a whole lot through the non-conference portion of the schedule other than uh, maybe some things haven't advanced as far as I thought they did. I, I don't know, but it's just been some dramatically different experiences, obviously, in dramatically different settings and circumstances. I, I, I would say, how would you, because you, you mentioned that, you know, you don't know how much you learn uh, from an FCS team or win over an FCS yeah. team. Not too long ago, Zach Kitley and Houston Baptist rolled in here, and you got out, out barely. That's right. I mean, right. it wasn't too long ago, and we're talking the last, what, three to four years. It wasn't too long ago when Colby Carthel and SFA and the Jacks showed up, and you got out barely. I think, like, what was that, like 28-22 was the SFA game. If memory serves, it's somewhere around in that. And then Houston Baptist, I think you beat them. 34 28 or, or something along those lines and I think this is a good F- FCS team so I, I I get I totally understand and I think I agree with I don't know I still don't know how much you you, you know but I think you could have learned you could have learned a lot actually uh the, the wrong way because we, yeah. we've actually seen that um and that was a sign of things to come so uh but uh this is the biggest game upcoming this weekend that you will have played by far, uh, just because of the meaning of it. Uh, it's a different season, and and you'll start to learn a lot more about you know who you are and how good you are or not. Uh, you know this weekend. Well, we can certainly confirm that some things have been learned about some young Red Raiders that have been on the field so far. Coming up ahead, I want to take a listen to defensive coordinator. Tim DeRuiter talking about some of those guys that have flashed to this point, and as I've already mentioned, very likely played themselves into a Big 12 playing time as we hit the conference slate here this week. Talk about who those guys are coming up next on Locked On Texas Tech. First, today's episode brought to you by Bird Dogs, making you look good. Feel great with their stretch shorts that fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you that sculpt your woman has always wished you had, whether you knew it or not. Way more flexible than stiff, restricting shorts you've had before, thanks to that cloud knit fabric, always made with cage-free, free-range clouds. Ah. They're going to stretch to give you movement without sacrificing that slimmer fit. And don't forget about the anti-stink sweat wicking fabric, keeping you cool and dry on any occasion. Golfing, grilling, chilling, four-wheeling, car dealing, woman thrilling, doesn't matter. I'm serious when they say they're good for everything. So good, you won't want to take them off, we promise. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on college. That's birddogs.com slash locked on college. Or enter the promo code Locked on college at checkout for a free custom water bottle with every order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on college or the promo code locked on college for a free custom water bottle with every order. And you won't ever want to take your bird dogs off. We promise. See for yourself at birddogs.com slash locked on college. Glad to have you along for the ride on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day, free and available on YouTube or wherever you got this podcast. When you have the record you have at this point in the season, Chris, things are not very rosy. 
you're not all that excited, not feeling that great about things. You need something to get you back on track feeling that way. But I think one aspect of what we've seen so far, and it could be this way for any team kind of struggling out of the gates, uh, that you could be excited about are some young guys flashing. And, man, we have seen that, and I don't mean it in a Frank the Tank way. I mean coming in and making a hand. Sometimes, you know, as a result of injury or whatever might be the case with the guy that we thought was going to be in front of them or a veteran that is in front of them, Ben Roberts is a great example of this so far. He is one of the names you're about to hear mentioned. But there have been a collection of a few who have gotten some time and I think have done enough to probably earn more time as we get into Big 12 play. If you don't believe me, uh, let's take a listen to defensive coordinator Tim DeRuiter. I think uh, uh, Dylan Spencer uh, kind of confirmed in our mind that he can make plays. Now, he's got some, a lot of technique work still to do and uh, just get lined up right. But but he was very, very physical, and uh, can, he'll, he'll earn some more playing time. You know, he's got to get in his playbook and make sure he knows exactly what we're supposed to have him doing as opposed to just guessing sometimes. Uh, ben Roberts con continues to do well. I thought, thought he played real, real well. Uh, was pleased with him. And, um, you know, Jordan Sanford, when he came in, uh, he and, and uh, Chap Lewis uh, and, you know, BJ, all those guys did some good things as, as far as young guys playing. Dylan Spencer, he was an early enrollee. This was one of your best signees from last year. Uh, he he was committed to the University of Texas for much of the the recruiting cycle, and then he uh, he he commits to you fairly late in the process. Houston tried to make a run at him. Uh, I even think uh, I even think the Houston folks uh, like talked negatively about Lubbock and all that stuff, and <sighs> and, and, and and which is. Uh, outrageous which is, which is ironic because you know obviously dana was in lubbock for eight or nine years <laughs> but anyway he uh he, he came to texas tech and he he's one of your you know last year's class one of your most heralded signees i he's he's raw but this does not look like an 18 year old kid like i've i've mm -hmm. seen him <laughs> multiple times like I, i'm like looking at him on the road trip when we were up in wyoming and i'm like that, that that doesn't look like any 18 year old I went to high school with. Um, but he, he, uh, I mean, because he looks like he's 25 years old and he, he's kind of, I think what, what Tim would tell you is he's kind of skinny. Uh, and, and I say that in, in football terms. Sure. I, mean, I think he's going to be able to add 25 to 30 pounds, you know, fairly easily and still, you know, have the same explosiveness and all those things. He really loves uh, football, and I think that they weren't – look, it, 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 he plays the same position that, um, you know, you've got Cole and a data ray, and then it was supposed to be Isaac Smith. So it, it's a clear redshirt year, right, until it's not. No Isaac Smith. And now, if you're listening to to Tim and, and Joey both, I mean, Joseph Adetere is not 100%. Uh, I don't know when he will be 100%. And I, I think that while he's back, I, I think that Dylan Spencer, if you're wanting to buy stock in somebody, buy, buy, uh, buy his. Because hmm. um, I think that he's going to play quite a bit uh the rest of the season and i think you know i think we mentioned that on, on the, one of the shows previously this week that joey kind of feels like how isaac smith really like emerged as the year went along last year and then he really flashed i think a lot of people were like who is this dude yeah Th this is what he sees for dylan spencer um but you can't teach his size and, and aggression and all that he's gonna make plenty of mistakes uh, he's very raw uh, at some level, but he's also very talented at some level too. But the the next wave, I know we're going to talk about other guys too, but the next wave is coming, man. Yeah. And like they're, we talked about it all summer too. All kinds of seniors, and then there's not there's not much middle there with your classes, and then it all goes to to freshmen. Yep. Here they are, man. It's exciting to see new blood make a hand, even though it's a little uh, nerve wracking because you don't necessarily want to draw it up that way to where they have to, but. We're kind of in a situation where some will. Um, we didn't hear Brennan Jordan necessarily mention there. We've been mentioning him a lot with that trio because of obviously the connection. But uh, you did hear Lewis. You did hear Sanford also mention. And, of course, Ben Roberts, I guess, continued just old hat for that guy now. Grizzled vet, a couple weeks behind him. <laughs> what are you seeing from those guys, Chris? Because uh, 
that's been a consistent theme, uh, definitely for uh, the DB since the season began, and Ben Roberts since he got some opportunity. Yeah, you know, and, and Ben is in there because of the injury to a, another young player in Jacob Rodriguez. Um, you know, and I think we would, would have heard a lot more about Ben in, in August, but he was dinged up along with Ty Kana, uh, who's also another very young linebacker. And these guys were kind of missed uh, weeks of camp, but I think Ben's Ben is uh, has me excited for the future of, of the middle linebacker spot. And uh, I think uh, – you know, and I, I think there's an injury to Trent Lowe, you yep. know, which is, you know, again, you're just kind of getting nickel and dime, man, at this linebacker spot. Tyreek Matthews has been out. So, anyway, you, you look up at Ben, and all of a sudden he is one of your most valuable players all of a sudden because if you take him away, it's like, uh-oh, now we have to go with, uh, you know. Because, well, I mean, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, I'm thinking about this week's quarterback situation. Like, you're Ben Roberts. You come out of the gates, and you get a Bo Nix class immediately. Yeah. How good should that be for you as a defender uh, when you're facing everybody else the rest of the season? Yeah, because he's going to see really good quarterbacks at some level of this season at different kinds. But I mean, you know, Bo Nix was a that was a different deal. Um, you know, I think Will Howard and Jalen Daniels and Quinn Ewers and you know Chandler Morris and there there's some sneaky, but like. Yeah, this weekend, you wouldn't think that Nico Marchiol or Garrett Green, if he is uh, able to play, are going to give him, you know, the same type of <laughs> master class that Bo Nix did. I mean, Nix has been playing college football for 15 years. You would think a pretty <laughs> crafty dude. So I just, I couldn't, I couldn't think of any, it's kind of daunting. If that's your first opportunity, but I couldn't think of anything better to kind of give you that With- trial by fire feel. <laughs> and with elite skill around him, Everywhere. talking about Bo Nix, yeah, yeah. With, with with elite linemen and elite running back and elite receiver, and on and on it went. Um, but uh, yeah, and, and I and I think you know, like Mike Dingle got into the game. Uh, it was it was funny because you know I said this on the broadcast, but uh, you know Tim DeRuiter, like when he describes Mike Dingle. Because this is the kid that that came from South Carolina, I think it was, and he ran track for Kitley in the spring. He's super fast. He was kind of an under the radar recruit, but Tech took him because he can just flat fly. Well, he's very scattered, I think, and he plays so fast, which leads to mistakes. But he's just running around. So, and Tim Deruder graduated from the Air Force, and so. When he was, when he was telling us about uh, we had him on the coach's show. I think it was last week when we were talking about Mike Dingle. He's like, you know, in the Air Force, they used to call this all thrust, no vector, um, because because it's like it's just like all gas, no brakes is essentially the way that you would describe that. Describe that, but that's the Air Force term for it, which is where he graduated from. But the, all all the guys down there on the sideline are sitting there, and they 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 love dingle because he just he's plays with his hair on fire and he may be going right. the wrong direction 100 miles an hour but he's diving on the pile he's playing like he's just like a, a crazed maniac but they they feed off of it and when dylan did something they were all like yeah i mean you know yeah. so you could just sense the the youth movement um and and all that and it's it's not just one or two guys i mean you're you, you mentioned the the the, the triumvirate of of the, the guys that we kind of <laughs> knew would maybe play um, and those guys, you know, are, are going to continue to get to play. But it's some of these other guys are starting, like Dylan and, and, and Dingle, that are starting to enter into the equation a bit. A couple of guys that I keep wondering how close they are, John Curry and then Marcus Ramon Edwards, two of the local products. I yeah. still think you're trying to maintain redshirt status for some of these guys. But as injuries and depth concerns pop up, I mean – you know, here you go. And you don't have A.J. McCarty, you know. I mean, he's been – I think uh, he's going to sit out this year um, and all that stuff. So, anyway, it, it's just – it's kind of fun to, to to watch some of this stuff. But, yeah, the youth movement on defense is certainly here. You got a good non-conference primer, a little tune-up, summer school tutorial, whatever you want to call it. But school is truly in session now as you uh, hit Morgantown, West Virginia, and open up Big 12 play. So, we'll see what they got for those that are still somewhat green – behind the ears coming up dead ahead let's take a look at the lay of the land within the big 12 now that we've got non-conference action behind us for texas tech opening up conference play where are we feeling like the red raiders are if we're talking contenders pretenders or that gooey middle we'll get to it next
on Locked On Texas Tech. First, today's episode brought to you by Jace Medical. And in this day and age, everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones when hit with the unexpected. And that's why Jace Medical is offering the Jace Case. The Jace Case includes five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you peace of mind. So you're not just hoping for access to medication during an emergency. With Jace Medical and the Jace Case, what you need is already in hand. And they make it simple. Handling everything from online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery, along with ongoing consultation and care. And with shortages, pandemics, reliance on China, and general supply chain issues, you need to be prepared now more than ever. So to do just that, head to jasonmedical.com, where the process is simple. Just fill out a form and bam, prescription, life-saving medications are headed to your door. And right now, save more than 360 bucks by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional $20 off by using our code locked on at checkout. Again, that's jacemedical.com, J-A-S-E medical.com, and the code is locked on for an added $20 off at checkout. And don't be caught unprepared with the Jace case from Jace Medical. a part of your day whenever wherever however you're making it happen we appreciate you being out there subscribe on youtube or anywhere you get podcasts so you never miss an episode wrapping it up today as we take a look at the big 12 conference non-conference portion of the schedule is over for texas tech where do they fit in to the league list contenders pretenders gooey middles limber up boys because this is a de facto power ranking. Does anybody know what this is? Huh. Oh, and I'm seeing it clear this week, Chris, as clear as I've ever seen the Big 12 Conference. Mostly focused on where you think Texas Tech falls in to the Big 12 race as we uh, kick open the gates, man. What are you seeing out there? I think when you when you do this exercise, it really has to be about not how you think they will finish, but about what you have seen and what you, what you absolutely know from just this year. And, and, and it... And it moves quite a bit week to week because, you know, the, 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 we're getting results and some of them are, are much better than others. And some teams haven't played anybody, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> I think um, I think it's pretty clear that your your Houston's are really struggling. Um, I think Cincinnati drops quite a bit. Iowa State drops quite a bit. Oklahoma State drops quite a bit. Baylor drops quite a bit based on, on your recent uh, results or – you know, just kind of what you have done to this point. Uh, and I think Texas Tech is kind of in that. Honestly, I did do a one through 14. Um, you know, I, I put it on paper and and I, I had Texas Tech and West Virginia right there at like kind of that eight and nine range. Yeah. You know, and it's weird to go all the way through 14 because it, <laughs> it still shocks the system whenever you're uh, remember that you have 14 teams in this league and not 10. But I think Texas Tech and West Virginia are kind of that eight, nine range and I don't know how good Pitt is I don't think they're very good although they have been pretty darn good in the last couple of years but Cincinnati and West Virginia much of how you would feel about what anything that they've done this year is going to be based off a win over Pitt okay yep uh but with Texas Tech I think what you say is you handled your business with your FCS team but you also we're this close to beating a really good Oregon team on national television. And so I guess you somewhat give them credit for a close loss against a really good team. Again, if you're trying to break ties, but here's who's better or here's who's, you know, Texas is, I think the leader in the clubhouse right now, as far as, you know, their win over Bama. Now, does that end up not looking as good? 
maybe we're starting to see some signs of that, but it's still nobody else has got a so, win like that. If it doesn't look as good down the road, will they go back and amend Texas's ranking for being falsely in? Well, <laughs> they will mind. not. That's, that's too complicated of a comment. I know. <laughs> they, 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 Oklahoma, you thought about it though. <laughs> I yeah, and, and Oklahoma, they're three and zero, oh, and they haven't played anybody. I mean, SMU is decent, but they haven't played really anybody with a pulse, no. uh, which is going to be kind of the theme for much of their season. Uh, they open up with Cincinnati on the road this week, and they're a fourteen and a half point favorite, I think. But I tell you. Kansas is better, I think, defensively than people thought, um, although they struggled at Nevada last weekend. I think BYU is, is yeah. has been better than people thought, or, or maybe Arkansas is not as good. I don't know, but you go in in Fayetteville, not an easy task. I think UCF is is good, but they're without um, John John Rice Plumley. You know, their, their quarterback. I think it's Timmy Klein maybe is the backup uh, that, that's now playing for the next several weeks. So and then and then Kansas State, do, do you do you fault them? Do you hammer them too much for losing on a sixty-one yard field goal on the road against a pretty good Missouri team, which was the longest field goal in SEC history? I don't know. I still think they're pretty good too. So that's kind of I don't know if I've forgotten anybody, but Oklahoma State, Iowa State, Baylor, Cincinnati, Houston, oh TCU, I think is is kind of in that gooey middle too. You know, if you want to talk about them, yeah. Yeah. I, Texas Christian to me has to lead the gooey middle. Uh, they got beat in another team Super Bowl right out of the gates. I, I don't. I'm not going to wipe them off of a relevancy radar just because of that loss. We'll have to wait and see. Obviously Texas. I think BYU uh, with some of the flashiest wins so far through a non-conference slate. I'm not going to fault uh, K State for what you just described there necessarily. Uh, and man, that that kicker was a chunk amazing that he could run for that for 61 yards um i think texas tech has to be in the top 10 but a, a nine ish is probably as far as i can go chris because you haven't really done i don't think given the context of the road setting of your wyoming loss i don't think you've done anything quite as bad as iowa state baylor oklahoma state or houston so there's four right there that have to be behind you they, those might be the only four um, but nine or ten is where I'm going to be landing with the Red Raiders. Who, who are the four that you mentioned? Uh, Iowa State, Baylor, Oklahoma State, Houston have just had some flame and dumpster fire losses. That yeah, and, and I, I I put you ahead of Cincinnati just because they went and lost to Miami yeah, of Ohio, that's true. and then and then their their big win is over Pitt, which I, I just. You know, I don't know. I don't know how good. It's so, better than what we got. It's kind of the West yeah, Virginia conversation. Right? It's like, that's eh, better than what we got. I don't know how good it yeah. is. But and at that's this fair. point in time, when you get into this snapshot, which is what we like to do, uh, then you're going to have to obviously kind of wait and see, I guess, what it bears out. But it's a power five win. So it's hard to take that away from them. And yet Oklahoma State, they're two and one, and they went on the road and won in Tempe. They beat Arizona State, a power five win, but then they come home True. and just get smoked by South Alabama. Um, no, you go straight to volleyball season. You do something <laughs> like that, I think. I don't even know if we should mention them in the power and the, ranking. The Alan Bowman experiment, man, is like that. That's the wildest quarterback situation I have ever seen. That is crazy. And he's playing three guys, and uh, like and it's just not working. And it's because they don't have one. That's the problem. And what I is think- the experiment? Like, we've seen him, Gundy. What are you doing? It's like Gundy got on top of a building and said, hey, I know you guys think you know gravity but I'm going to tinker a little bit further. I'm going to jump off this building and see if I don't smash my face into the ground. Whoops, you did. (laughs) Bowman is still the same quarterback. Gravity still works the same way. It also makes it really interesting and intriguing when his kid is one of the three quarterbacks that he's playing. (laughs) Gunner (laughs) Gundy. What a name, too. Yeah, so it, 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 I, I, I really it sucks that yeah you don't play Oklahoma. Is State it too this late year. to schedule those guys? It I was sucks ask you don't play one. Iowa State this year too. Um, but you know, such is life. <laughs> All right, Chris, appreciate the time as always, my man. We're gonna be back for a little Friday throwdown coming up on the other side as we're getting closer and closer to fur flying from Morgantown, West Virginia. Appreciate it as always, man. Enjoyed it. We'll see you for the next round. Keep. The hope alive. Absolutely. We'll talk to you tomorrow uh, and talk to you Friday and then away to Morgantown we go. That's right. Home of the Gandy candy. The (laughs) Duchendorf Cup is almost upon us. For Chris Level, I'm Casey Cowan. We'll see you for the next round on Locked on Texas Tech.